I will not stand by and have everything that's mine taken from me. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 medieval themed TV shows. That man was not killed in combat. A demon in the form of a woman killed him. For this list, we'll be looking at the best shows that are either set in the Middle Ages or a fantasy equivalent of the time period. Which of these shows set in the time of knights and chivalry is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Nightfall. The stories surrounding the Knights Templar make up some of the most alluring tales from the Middle Ages. There can be no mercy or salvation, only punishment. Therefore, it made sense that the History Channel would chronicle the history of the Order in a truly ambitious fashion. While the broader historical narrative and many of the events are true, the show takes more than a few liberties to make the overall plot more exciting. <laughs> The long-running thread about the search for the Holy Grail is particularly strong. Over two seasons, viewers also saw the Templar in the Crusades and their clashes with both royalty and the Pope. It all culminates in a bloody and inevitable ending for this legendary group. There is no place in the temple for a man who betrays brothers. Number 19, Galavant. This musical comedy fairy tale from Dan Fogelman is a bit of an outlier to most shows in the medieval genre. Instead of leaning into a dark and brutal tone that is present in similar series, Galavant opts instead to be a lighter and much more jovial affair. By all the stars above, I'll save my one true love. Its entertaining musical numbers alone made it stand out. Since it also had witty jokes, charming characters, and great acting, it quickly became a critical darling. You'll be staying here forever. Or at least until those abs go soft. <laughs> but... Go! It also featured an impressive number of comedians and singers who were willing to lend their voices to the show. However, its critical success failed to transfer to good ratings. Although its low viewership got it canceled by ABC, it's still worth revisiting today. Now back off. I swear I will make you into a nut of God. Number 18, Wolf Hall. The civil unrest that took place in England in the 1520s and 30s serves as the backbone for the compelling drama of Wolf Hall. Well, this... This comforts me. The show's impressive cast was led by Academy Award winner Mark Rylance as Thomas Cromwell. It also boasted Hollywood heavyweights like Claire Foy as Anne Boleyn, Jonathan Price, and Tom Holland in supporting roles. They say, only felons have dogs you can't see at night. Uh-huh. The miniseries was praised for its historical accuracy. Outside of perfectly recreating period attire, lots of filming was done in English medieval castles and various Tudor houses. The decision to shoot by candlelight in various places made the series feel even more authentic and entrancing. In the end, the efforts in front of and behind the camera earned this drama a Golden Globe for best miniseries. I think she would not be interested in anything less than a masterly performance. Number 17, Redwall. This Canadian TV series adapted the first three novels of an iconic children's fantasy series. Since it was animated, the show could portray a number of things that would have been difficult to pull off convincingly in a live-action adaptation. I need volunteers to come with me, to find and guide the shrew army. It's safe to say seeing anthropomorphized mice creatures talking and fighting in medieval armor looks much better on Redwall. Additionally, the animated style allowed the fantastic magical elements of the books to be conveyed without an issue. Rats! They're stealing Martin the Warrior! Don't let the cute talking critters fool you into thinking this is a light and soft story. Despite being a children's show, Redwall often dealt with mature themes that made it a draw for older audiences too. Number 16. Cadfile. You can't be. Cadfile! Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can be hard to make a crime show where a brilliant detective solves a murder mystery each week stand out among all the other programs with similar premise. But Cadfile pulled it off by taking the genre into a setting that whodunits don't usually explore. The title character of the show is a 12th century monk detective that solves medieval murders. 94, you had orders to slay, but the 95th? No king authorized his removal. And whoever destroyed him is guilty of murder. Since Cadfile often had a deadline to meet, seeing him try to solve crimes in time made for a thrilling watch. Derek Jacobi was praised for bringing so much humanity and brilliance to the title character. It was no mystery why critics were fond of this out-of-the-box investigative procedural. That dagger became Corsell's sole reward for murder. Number 15, Miracle Workers Dark Ages. 
When anthology series Miracle Workers returned for its second season, the show decided to put a lighthearted bent on one of the worst time periods to live in human history. Man, I hate this stupid town. Dark Ages featured characters with relatively modern viewpoints. Whenever their opinions clash against the old-timey customs and beliefs present in the Middle Ages, we're treated to comedic gold. Great news! It took 16 months, but Prince Chauncey's amazing duck show is finally ready to premiere. Much like the first season, the show featured a ton of humor that poked fun at powerful religious and political institutions. It also brought back Daniel Radcliffe in a leading role and Steve Buscemi. Although the latter actor played God in season one, seeing him return as a shoveler of human excrement was just one of the most hilarious aspects of this medieval romp. Why are these shovels so short? Well, this way we have to stoop over more, and it's harder. Number 14, Pillars of the Earth. An epic tale that chronicles the construction of a mighty cathedral might not sound like the most exciting show. Stock them neat, don't just drop them on the floor. However, Pillars of the Earth also had plenty of political maneuvering, death war, and more to accompany the beautiful architecture. It also cast actors such as Eddie Redmayne and Haley Atwell before they became big international stars. With a budget of $40 million over eight episodes, the show looked as impressive as the cathedral that it featured. And the show was so much more than just a feast for the eyes. The fascinating performances from both Atwell and Ian McShane were both worthy of Golden Globe nominations. Between its unique premise and stacked cast, Pillars of the Earth was a series with a strong foundation. Come to court again, Lord William. As a matter of fact, I have. Only this time I'm courting you. <laughs> Number 13, El Cid. Epic stories that were once only possible as films have found their way to the small screen in recent years. Fortunately, this trend brought audiences the limited and celebrated run of El Cid. Decades after Charlton Heston's famous cinematic take on the character, the series once again focused on the life of a Castilian knight. The title character struggles as he's torn between his loyalty to his family and his duties to the king. At the same time, everyone from the queen to the princess fight for their own goals. Portions of this twisty drama were shot in Spain to make the series feel more authentic to the period. El Cid's natural feel and complex story kept making us eager to watch the next episode. Number 12, Vikingana, aka Norsemen, created and shot in Norway. This medieval comedy has drawn a few comparisons to similar Monty Python stories. You can't walk around with horns on your helmet. It looks ridiculous. This is due to Vikingana, aka Norsemen, featuring tons of absurdist humor that often surfaces when characters look at the historical setting through a modern lens. One of the best sources of this contrast comes from a captured Roman actor named Rufus. As he tries to improve his situation, the local villagers get into all sorts of crazy and occasionally violent hijinks. <gasps> Since Norseman shot its entire run in both the Norwegian and English languages, the humor is able to reach an incredibly wide audience. If you're looking for a truly absurd blast from the distant past, this show will definitely fulfill your needs. So, no. Who dares to brew their own chieftain? Number 11, Rain. Rain takes the story of Mary, Queen of Scots, and gives it the edgy teen romantic drama treatment that the CW had become so adept at doing over the years. I don't believe it. Your Grace. No, call me Mary, please. Despite containing a few historical inaccuracies, many of the overarching plots were pulled right from the history books. Every serious issue from death to succession was covered throughout the show's lifespan. Although historians didn't love every aspect of the show, it had a strong and supportive audience. It was also celebrated for its great costumes and focus on female-fronted storylines. By trying to appeal to a younger demographic than usual, Rain carved out a unique position in fantasy history. It's best that you don't interrupt. This is not easy or pleasant, and I'm not even sure if it's wise. Number 10, The Witcher. Although Netflix executives originally intended to make The Witcher into a single movie, it was thankfully redeveloped into a beloved series. Lead actor slash avid gamer Henry Cavill got the show off to a great start by originating the role of Geralt. But now, if I have to choose between one evil and another, then I prefer not to choose at all. Whenever his character faced an enemy or a monster, we knew we'd be in for very creative fights as well as awe-inspiring special effects. Over the course of the show, we watched the hardened warrior embrace his lighter side through his relationships with his powerful ward Ciri, the enchanting witch Yennefer, and the bard Yaskier. 
How many of these lords want to kill you? Hard to say. One stops keeping count after a while. They all try to take care of each other in a dense fantasy plot that fully engrosses viewers in a dark and fascinating fantasy world. <laughs> Number 9. Merlin One of England's most popular literary characters got a series that lived up to his reputation when the BBC brought Merlin to the small screen. A boy that will in time father a legend. His name... Merlin. The show sets itself apart from classic King Arthur tales by focusing on what the royal and warlock were like when they were young. By making the pair the same age, the relationship between them became more precious and personal. I gave her my word. Sorry, take it, we're going anyway. You're smarter than you look. As each character moved forward towards becoming legends, we hoped they wouldn't grow apart along the way. Outside of the great story, the series was praised for its special effects and how well it incorporated fantasy elements. Merlin was simply an enchanting series from beginning to end. Number 8. Da Vinci's Demons Da Vinci's Demons completely abandons any notion of accuracy in favor of some good old-fashioned fun. The show reimagines the famed artist as a sort of medieval combination of Tony Stark and James Bond. Come on, Nico. Let's stir the pot a little. While Da Vinci serves as a kind of secret agent, he uses his wits and a few inventions to outsmart and outplay any villains he runs into along the way. The artist needed all the help he could get when he had to fight a mystical cult, an evil pope, vampires, and more. He needs blood. I'm gonna give him some of mine. The over-the-top tone of the series helped give fantasy fans something markedly different from what they're used to. But if you're writing a paper about Da Vinci, you probably shouldn't use this fun series as a source. And then I can lead us all to a land filled with opportunity. Number 7. The Borgias While the Borgias appeared in Da Vinci's Demons, the show bearing their name took the opposite approach to adapting history by striving for a grounded and gritty tone. We'll go on. The suspense is killing them. This series was often compared to crime dramas like The Godfather. Their main similarity is that the Borgias also explore the horrible lengths its title family went to in order to further their own goals. Whenever we tune in, it was unclear what Cardinal Rodrigo Borgia might do next. You are our son. <sighs> no one else is. Do not make us regret that fact. We were on the edge of their seats as he bribed and maneuvered his way towards becoming the Pope. The show managed to effectively explore the dark and shifting political climate as the Middle Ages came to a close and the Renaissance began. And please convey to him our wholehearted support for his Neapolitan adventure. Number 6. The Tudors When showrunner Michael Hurst created The Tudors, he was no stranger to sleek and sexy retellings involving medieval British monarchs. I believe these are all just causes for war! Yes. That's why his series about Henry VIII and the Tudor dynasty felt so polished and intriguing. The show followed the king's quest to balance his own desires with the needs of his subjects. Along the way, the series highlights his relationships with his multiple wives, the start of the English Reformation and tendency to execute people. Both the steamy and dramatic portions of the Tudors pushed the series as a whole to become one of Showtime's most popular shows at the time of airing. Between its boundary-pushing scenes and dramatic weight, there's bound to be something for every viewer here. I want you. Number 5. The Black Adder Master of physical humor, Rowan Atkinson took his brilliant brand of sketch comedy to the Middle Ages in the first of his four historical Black Adder series. It's fighting! <laughs> Clearly having the time of their lives! As the future Mr. Bean schemed his way through the political landscape of 15th century England, we couldn't stop laughing. The show has a ton of fun ignoring or severely remixing historical events of the era. Atkinson shines as a character that alternates between being utterly despicable and completely likable on a dime. Everyone's dying of the plague! Oh yes, that's what they claim, those peasants! Any excuse to get off a decent day's work? He also showed off his talents as a writer by giving each episode a different theme. Throughout this series, events like the Crusades became just another source of silly comedy. Six large beers and, uh, and another large beer! <laughs> Number 4. The Last Kingdom Based on the historical novels by Bernard Cornwell, The Last Kingdom follows the conflict between the Saxons of England and the Viking Northmen. Naturally, this premise lends itself to a story full of violence, betrayals, and shocking deaths. I need to kill someone. No. And I choose him. 
Although the show loosely followed historical events, it featured a number of real figures from the real conflicts. This made it feel more like a dramatic alternate retelling instead of a flat-out fantasy. She's exactly as I'd hoped. The Last Kingdom's well-acted drama, political intrigue, and spectacular battles have made it a critical hit. The members of its stellar cast also helped get viewers incredibly invested in the characters. The fact the show was big enough to warrant a Netflix film is further proof that the show rules. Let's make ourselves rich! Yeah! Number 3. The Hollow Crown when this prestigious and ambitious series took on the daunting task of adapting William Shakespeare's most famous plays, it soared far beyond its already high expectations. Jeremy Irons, Tom Hiddleston, and Benedict Cumberbatch all give masterclass performances. Shall we let them enjoy our lands? Hey! with our words? Hey! They're all a part of a tremendous ensemble that was responsible for bringing Shakespeare's history plays to life. The show gives viewers a dramatized version of the era with brilliant production design that makes the audience feel like they've traveled back in time. We would be resolved before we hear him of some things of weight. The sets, costuming, and award-winning directors also helped the show receive near-universal acclaim. It easily stands as both a superb medieval show and exquisite adaptation of Shakespeare's works. Some slain in war, some haunted by the ghosts they have deposed. Number 2. Vikings Vikings found tremendous success by drawing from the legends and epic sagas of the Scandinavian people. Most of the narrative focuses on the lives of Ragnar Lothbrok and his sons as they struggle for power and to protect their families in a brutal era. You haven't helped me at all, ancient one. The show blew viewers away with its incredibly staged fight and battle scenes, and in between the bloodshed, watching the individual journeys of characters as they rise and fall is compelling. It is one thing to use a weapon. It's another to kill. The cast's complete commitment to their roles is also astounding to see. People were so hungry to explore this age that it spawned a sequel series called Vikings Valhalla. In the span of just over a decade, a single fantasy show started a bona fide franchise. Kill them all! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Game of Thrones Millions of people tuned in each week to see characters fight to determine who sat atop the Iron Throne. No expense was spared on the gorgeous sets, period accurate costumes, and gigantic CGI dragons. <laughs> And while fans all had their favorite characters, they were regularly reminded that no one was safe from a sudden or brutal demise. The show's constant focus on flawed and human characters perfectly blended into the show's fantasy elements. You know nothing, Jon Snow. While the final season's quality is debatable, it was definitely successful enough to spawn the beloved House of the Dragon. Although the spin-off series is impressive, Game of Thrones deserves special credit for proving that fantasy shows can be pop culture juggernauts. There's our brave men knocking at our door. Let's go kill them! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.